Professor Akram here, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take a quick rendering of your scene in 3D Studio Max. Here you can see I've been working on a Brefka scene using spline models. So I have used the spline tool to create an outline of some bacon, which we then extruded using the extrude modifier. I have created a plate and a mug using the spline tool to create a side view of the shape and then the lay the modifier to extrude that shape along a 360 path. I have created the handle for the mug using the loss command which uses a spline shape and extrudes it along a spline path. We also have in this scene a couple of fried eggs. The eggs themselves are a simple spline shape that has been lofted and using the loft deformation we were able to create this organic extrusion so that it's not a uniform extrusion all the way across but it has parts of the extrusion that are higher or lower than others. We've also created an egg yolk using a geosphere from our standard primitives and we set that to a hemisphere and we did some non-uniform scaling to get that to set just below our egg whites. The last little thing that I did in order to fill out our mug here is I created a very uh, shallow height cylinder that sets, as you can see, just at the top inside of our mug and represents some hot cocoa that we may be drinking inside of our mug. So I have my scene here and now I want to take a rendering of it. So in the perspective view, I use my view tools to get my scene into a position that I'm happy with. And now I want to render out a JPEG of this scene. So up at the top in the main menu, you'll see a series of teapots. These tools all have have to do with rendering and the one with the gear is the rendering setup so if I click on that this will open up the rendering setup dialog and there are different ways to render uh, depending on what it is you're wanting to do the first thing that you want to set up is which renderer are you using. So rendering has to do with actually processing the data into an image, into an animation, whatever the case may be. And the renderer is the engine that processes that. And there are different ones built into 3D Studio Max. If I click the drop there, you can see that I've got the Quicksilver, the Art Renderer, the Scan Lines, the View, and Arnold. And each one has its own features and each one works a little bit differently depending on what kind of objects you're rendering. In our case, I'm just going to leave this at Scanline. We have a very basic model. We don't have any materials on here. We're just using the standard colors inside of Max. And we're really just doing a quick prototype render to assess the scene. The next thing that we want to do if we scroll down in the parameters box here is to determine how we're going to render this. If we're rendering an animation, we want to specify the frames of the animation. If we want the active time segments, 0 to 100 frames, which is what we currently see on the timeline, or if we want a specific series of frames, or if we just want certain frames rendered out as a JPEG. It just depends on what we want. My scene has no animation, so I'm going to leave this as a single render. Another thing that you want to be aware of if you are scrolling through the parameters of your render output here, it is very easy to accidentally have something inside of a dialog and start to scroll and accidentally change those values. So you don't want to scroll with your mouse wheel. You always want to click and drag up with sort of the pan tool inside this parameter box because that will mess up things if you are not careful. The next thing that we want to do is specify the output size. And by default, we've got some very small sizes here. Under custom, if I click on custom, I can specify, for instance, I know that I want to do the HDTV outputs 
and I want to specify 1920 by 1080. That's the aspect ratio that I am going to output as. It really depends on what you're doing. It depends on what your output's going to be. But for my purposes, I'm going to do 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to keep scrolling. There's a lot of different options depending on different types of effects and things that we have in our scene. But like I said, we have a very basic scene. If I know that I want to save this render, I can preset this up right here. And this will allow me to save this scene as a specific file name. Now keep in mind, these are the rendering setup. So if I were to say, go in and click the quick render, it will use this setup every time. So if I'm really quickly trying to check to see how the scene looks, and I've told it to save to a specific file and location, every single time it's going to be rewriting that file and saving. Usually you don't want to set up the save options in the render output here. You'll only do that if, if you're rendering a final product or if you're rendering an animation where it needs to save to a specific location. So this is just the basics of what you need to set for the render setup. From this dialog, we can hit render. But more often than not, once you have your settings set up, you'll be doing multiple renders using the quick render tool. So I'm gonna actually close this dialog. You wanna make sure that you have the correct viewport selected for the view that you want to render. And like I said, more often than not, once your rendering setup is completed, you're gonna use the quick render or render frame wi window here and hit render. Render. And that's going to render our scene with some default lighting built in. And I can close this window if I decide, you know, maybe I don't like this view. Maybe I want to go in here. Maybe I want to rotate this a little bit more. Maybe get a little bit different angle. And then I can hit the quick render again. Hit render and it will re-render that scene for me. Now, at some point, if I do decide that I'm kind of happy with this and I would like to save this image for a reference or something, I can quickly go into my save image right here and I can go into my save here and I can choose where I want to save my image. Now, if you have set up your Max project correctly, you already have a bunch of folders to save to and you want to be saving your render outputs to the render output folder. So I've changed to the render output folder. And in the file name, you want to give the file a name. In my case, I'm going to name this breakfast. And then you want to specify the file type that you are going to render out as. I am rendering out as a JPEG. And then I hit save. It's going to give me some JPEG compression settings. I'm going to leave those as default and press OK. And that is it. I have now created a saved copy of this rendered image. And that is how you do a quick image render in 3D Studio Max. I hope you found this lesson informative, and don't forget to check out other lessons and tutorials on the channel. So what are you waiting for? Get creative today!